So today we're going to be looking at two different types of frictional force. Um, so frictional force always opposes motion. So if we have an object, um, say we have this box that is sliding to the right, friction is always going to be to the left. You'll never have friction going in the same direction as motion. It's just not possible. Um, so there's two types of friction, which is kinetic and static. So kinetic means sliding. So if it ever says an object is sliding on the ground, we know that has to be kinetic friction. Static friction means no sliding. Um, and pretty much static friction we'll see is um, if we have this object that we're pushing, but it's not moving anywhere, it's not sliding anywhere. So it's just, uh, for example, it's staying steady. It's, you're not applying enough force to even get it started. For example, if you have a, a car that you're trying to push, initially you'll have static fri friction pushing against you because there's no sliding. But eventually it'll turn into kinetic friction because now the tires will start to spin and now it'll be in motion. So you can think of it like this. Kinetic is um, friction that's in motion and static is friction where objects are not in motion for simplicity's sake. So the frictional force for kinetic friction is um, mu k times uh, fn, and fn is the normal force. And we'll see that, for example, if we have this object right here that's flat on the ground, um, the normal force is always against the object. So perpendicular to um, the ground, or perpendicular to whatever this object is sliding on. Um, likewise, if this was on the incline plane, the normal force would be uh, perpendicular to the, the, the ground or this inclined plane that it's sliding on. Okay? And mu k is just a constant, it's a, a kinetic friction constant. And every object um, and the ground have a certain kinetic, um, mu of k, um, the coefficient of kinetic friction. And same thing with static friction, uh, we see that it's mu of s, which is the coefficient of static friction, times the normal force. And we see that the static friction, though, is only, uh, that's the maximum. So we need to know that the, the static friction is a, a maximum of mu s times fn. And we'll see why that's the case. Okay, so in this case, we have this graph that says um, f is the frictional force and t is time. Um, and so what we want to notice is that um, the frictional force starts from zero and it slowly increases and we'll see what that is and then it, it has this peak down. Um, so what we can say is that this peak is going to be F S max. So the, the maximum static friction. All right? And so in this case from zero to one, the object is not in motion. So no motion. Okay, so we're just pushing on an object and it's pushing back at us and we can't move it. It's, it's for example, if we have that car and it's not moving anywhere. So, so no movement is happening, no sliding is, is occurring. So from zero to one, no motion is occurring. But in position two, this is kinetic. So this is now when we turn it into kinetic friction. And so that's when we have to use the equation Fk equals mu k times Fn. And in this case over here, F of s equals mu of s times F of n. Okay, um, so in this case right here, we'll see that this Fs of max, remember how I said before that this is the maximum static friction that anything can have. Well, um, if we're only exerting, uh, say we have this object right here, and this object is only exerting uh, 100 newtons um, in the reverse direction, um, but the static friction has the potential to be 800 newtons, right? This static friction will only be 100 newtons. The max is 800, but since this object is only exerting 100 newtons in the other direction, um, our static friction is only going to be 100 newtons, and we'll probably see that later on. Okay, so in this example, we have an object weighing 100 newton is pushed with a 50 newton force. What is the acceleration of the object? And the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. So let's just draw a picture. So we have this object, um, and it weighs... 100 newtons, okay? So it weighs 100 newtons. And we're pushing it with a 50 newton force. So we're pushing it with 50 newtons. And we want to find um, what the acceleration is. And so we know the acceleration is going to be in that direction. But we need to find out um, what also the force of the kinetic friction is. Because we were given this um, mu k equals 0.2. Um, so remember from our equation, we have f of k equals uh, mu k times fn. Okay, so what's the normal force? Well, because there's no other vertical force and we know that the object is not falling, the normal force has to oppose the weight. 
Okay, so we know the normal force has to be 100 newtons. So 100 times 0.2 equals 20. So we know that the kinetic friction is 20 newtons. Okay, so we know that the kinetic friction is 20 and we know the, the amount that we're pushing is 50. So what is the net force? F net of horizontal equals 50 minus 20 equals 30 newtons. Okay, and this will equal to the mass times the acceleration, the horizontal acceleration. So mass times the acceleration um, and we'll call that AH. So we know AH equals 30 over the mass. So what exactly is the mass? Well, we knew that the weight was 100 newtons, and we know weight equals m times g. Okay, that's just an equation that we, we should know. So m equals 100 divided by 10. So the mass is 10. So we know that the acceleration is 30 divided by 10, which is 3. And we know that acceleration is always meters per second squared. So meters per second squared, 3 meters per second squared to the right. We always have to give it a direction. And in this example, we say that 30 newtons is exerted on a 100 newton crate that's at rest. What is the static friction exerted on the object? Okay, so we have um, this 100 newton crate. So this is a 100 newton crate. Okay, um, and uh, 30 newtons is exerted on a 100 um, newton crate. Okay, so we exerted 30 newtons in this direction. Um, and we know that the normal force is 100 again. Um, and so what we do again is Fs max, remember this is the max, equals the static friction, which is um, the coefficient of static friction, which is 0.4, um, times 100. Okay, so that will be 40. Okay, so we know that the, the maximum static friction can be 40. So generally, we would probably think, oh, it's going to be 40 newtons. But remember, this is the max static friction. And we see that we pushed at 30 newtons, okay? And if this object is not in motion, we know that the static friction has to be equal and opposite. If this was 40 newtons, we would see that the net um, force would be um, to the left, and this static friction would somehow um, cause the object to move to the left. But we know that's not true because it's at rest. Okay, so we know that the static friction has to be 30 newtons as well. So we know Fs has to be 30 newtons. And this is where this max comes into play. And, and the MCAT loves to trick you like this. They'll always put in the, the maximum as a choice. And generally, that will never be the case. This is just the maximum value that it could possibly be. Um, but we know that it just has to oppose whatever force that's in the opposite direction. So we know it has to be 30 newtons.